This is Twit. Speaking of other things, didn't you promise that she was going to yeah, reveal let's some see it. crazy? Let's see it. Amy Webb has something I'm very jealous. Uh, first, she's going to take off her glasses. Does your husband, the ophthalmologist, approve of what you're about to do? So, um, yes. Uh, let me preface this by saying I have for a very long time been talking about this is the end. This is the beginning of the end of smartphones this year, and we're transitioning into what comes next. I believe what's next are smart glasses. Totally agree. That, and everybody who says this guy was a I'm glass hole glasses, before anybody else. I was the biggest glass hole. <laughs> so, for everybody, you know. So anyhow, for people who say I would never wear glasses, all of the data. There's all these studies out showing how quickly we are all becoming nearsighted because of the screens. Um, and so with that being said, that's by the way, why uh, Apple gonna, has introduced the iPhone I'm XS put on, Max. Yeah, well, that's part of the reason why. So, um, so this headset, I've experimented with lots of different wearable devices and, um, you know, I had glass, I I've had lots of different smart glasses. I've tried HoloLens. Um, not, I, the only other experience that I can compare to the first time that I put on Magic Leap, which is what I'm about to do. Um, was when I was living in Japan and I was in Akihabara and I, I saw a prototype phone that was connected to the internet. And I mean, seeing it was not that exciting, but but at the, like from the interface but standpoint. You saw but, what it meant. Knowing, yeah. I mean, it changed everything. Mm -hmm. And so when I put these this on- This is remarkable. The time, yeah. Now, Magic Leap, ago, I was really, I, I maybe still am a little torn between classifying Magic Leap as the next big thing or as Theranos. I think that they have really- uh, but now they've got a product. No, l listen. So this this is this goes back to what I was saying earlier. Um, this technology is so sophisticated. It it is. I so mean, for those turns, who, for those who don't know, these are augmented reality glasses. They're not. Mixed they're not. Reality. They are, they're not. They are mixed. No. So th this is the other thing. The founders, I think, have done some stupid things like promising to speak at a TED event and they probably just didn't have something ready to show or talk about. So instead they showed up in spacesuits and dance around for like seven right. minutes to freaky sounding music. Well, and their website makes anything. a promise that I don't, it might be a little hard to deliver on. I disagree. Um, the experience that I have now, I mean, at the moment they don't do a ton, but what they can do has completely Okay. Blown me away, and this and so, this is why I'm asking you because I trust you. Yeah. You've so used, what does it do? You've used Hololens, right? This is. I've yes. Okay. The difference is that's this turns Microsoft's your, version of this, right? Um, this turns the in, any space that you're in um, in seconds into a spatial computing environment. So you you do have to put the glasses on. They are not going to look like this forever. No. You are not going to have to carry a heavy pack around forever. Um, so that works know, completely un untethered. You can you can use these correct. without well, being I mean, you're tethered here, but the pox, compute but is happening in the cloud. Yeah, um, or some of it. So, uh, but but you know, I'm, I map, for example, the room that I'm in, and the entire room then is turned into a spatial computing environment where, for the moment, so I can see everybody just fine. Um, I can connect to people in other cities, and I can see them in the space where I'm in. Now, why yep. do you say this is not augmented reality? What's the difference between that because and from mixed my, reality? Because AR is more of a two-dimensional, it's it's overlaying uh, somebody else's images okay. onto an existing space. Um, this is an is interactive. So if I, <laughs> because it responds to gesture, it, it responds to other elements. So if I... Um, you can have little creatures and fish. Like I turn my office into an aquarium for fun. <laughs> um, and you can sort of push the fish out of the way and you're, you're moving around and you, you can, can bring other people You can in. touch them. I mean, you don't feel I mean, it when your fingers, but but there. No, when but you move does, your hand in that space, it interacts with the thing. Correct. And there's no lag. So the co there's a cognitive So it's doing hand. Happens. It's doing hand tracking. Um. I'm, it must be, right? It is, yeah. Uh, it is. It is. Wow. So, so, okay, but what's happening is, you know, your your brain gets tricked. I put these on my husband, who we put a hole in the ground, we, a virtual hole, um, and he, you know, he knew that it was not real, but it looks real. Yeah. Um, and he had a hard time walking yeah. toward I've it. I've had that so, experience with virtual reality as well. Yeah. I mean, that's not. So, anyhow, here's what I would say: <laughs> it is abundantly clear to me that you know. 
this is quickly progressing. The, the, this headset, which is big and clunky right now, um, is is the form factor is going to look more like glasses. Yeah. yeah. At some point. Um, well, this is actually be, a, a light years ahead of the Google Glass experience. Well, the, and of, so, even of Hololens. If you look at the history really. of the development of this, the original one was the size of a yeah. car, basically. Yeah. But aren't they doing that, whatever that was that they wanted to do initially, that ray tracing thing that this is, or is this more like just two screens I mean, no, no, no. Well, it's um, they were actually talking about retinal projection at some point. So this yeah. is right. So, but here's here's what I would say. Um, nobody, we have to give these guys time, and I, I have no horse in this race at all. Um, I'm not an investor. I don't know right. them personally. I'm just telling you that what I have currently seen absolutely blew me away, and I, I very rarely get blown away by new technology. And my concern is that if they don't suddenly have a bunch of apps and products in market and they don't have a consumer product ready right away, everybody's going to call them a failure. This technology is still a decade, you know, for it to really hit the mainstream and do things that are more than just playing games like what you're seeing right yeah, now. I hate these um, demos. Do things like import your grandmother into your living room and have a conversation with her or see real-time data. Like, here's a great implementation. Like, uh, during some the next like debate or congressional hearing, I've got my glasses on, and every single time somebody speaks, I can see what PACs they've donated to. I can see who they have financial ties to. I mean, all of that stuff is on our near horizon, but we've got to give these guys times to some time to work. And, and, and that's actually an augmented reality feature, but overall, it's not. It's not. It's you, augmented reality is one of the things you can do. But but one of the things that for for skeptics out there, for, I'm a skeptic. Okay, for ske that, okay skeptics. So you like regular? Look at look at this screen here. You have this big screen. It's beautiful. It's physical. Yeah. It's there. Okay, the most banal usage for Magic Leap is one that we can all relate to. Imagine a world where screens of any size were free. How many would you have? Where would you put them? Well, what look at my office. Them? I have about 20 right. of them. Well, but they weren't so free. At this desk <laughs> They're where expensive. I, where I'm sitting right now, I actually put six screens. So I, I have yeah. a vertical yeah. monitor on one side yeah. I'm, I, and, the, and a horizontal monitor. There's a huge like difference. Here's minimal. the difference. <laughs> Those screens are outside your sensorium and you move around independently of them. <clears throat> you put them on your face. Uh, I, to There's, me, this still is another virtual them. reality experience. Where it's, people got excited about virtual reality until they did it for any length of the time. The difference is if you put it on the wall and then you leave the room, it's, it stays in the room behind you just like a physical screen. It's there when you come back in the room. It just gives me That's a headache. Right. <laughs> VR should give you, does, should give you a headache because um, the technology has not progressed enough so that we've solved for lag. <laughs> and VR has very, very, very limited use cases. So VR works for games and it works for certain types of you know, storytelling like a movie, um, it does not work for most other things. The biggest and or, it, it's got a therapeutic use, but it came to market first. And so the problem is that we've conflated and, and we've had, you know, the first AR apps came out immediately after the first iPhone launched. So there was something called Retour, which was an early days AR app to help you get around the city of Paris. Um, so you know, and then Google Glass came out and it should never have been marketed as a consumer device. And they, you know, they had all kinds of PR problems. The, the underlying technology was interesting. Um, so, so, but they're different things.